pop star Taylor Swift and politicians such as US President Joe Biden. It's important that you save your vote for the November election. UK Labour leader Keir Starmer and London's Mayor Sadiq Khan have all found themselves victims of deep fakes in recent months. I control the Met Police. They will do as the Mayor of London tells them and obey orders. Whether it's fake explicit images or audio recordings of conversations that haven't ever happened, dodgy deepfakes created using readily available AI-powered tools have spread like wildfire across social media, sowing seeds of mistrust and blurring the lines between reality and often malicious fiction. But in this confused and confusing landscape, what happens when politicians use deepfake technology themselves? To find out, we need to take a trip from the Big Smoke to the Big Apple. Attention's focused here in Lower Manhattan, New York City Hall. It's become almost commonplace for bad actors to deepfake politicians, but it's unusual for politicians to deepfake themselves. That's something that the Mayor of New York has actually done. Towards the end of last year, Mayor of New York Eric Adams revealed in a press conference that he'd used deep fake technology to make a series of automated or robocalls to NYC residents. In these calls, which mainly promoted the hiring of venues owned by the city, the mayor was able to speak a variety of languages, including Mandarin, Cantonese and Spanish, using deep fake tech. These actions have raised more than a few eyebrows in certain quarters. To find out more... I needed to leave Manhattan and head to Brooklyn. It's here I caught up with civil rights and privacy campaigner Albert Fox Khan. He believes the mayor's use of AI sets a dangerous precedent. And to me, it's really just this alarming wake-up call about the potential for abuse of these deepfake technologies. When you normalize the use of this sort of deepfake technology, when you use it to convey authentic government announcements, then you're basically educating the public that deepfakes are reliable, that you should trust what you hear in a deepfake. We, there's huge potential to use deepfakes to really undermine trust in government and trust in our institutions. The mayor's office declined our request for an interview, but Eric Adams has publicly stated New York City will be doing more stuff with AI and will use it and not abuse it. Political use of this technology is on the rise around the world. Henry Ida is an authority on deepfakes and AI. This isn't just a Western phenomenon, this is really global. And one that really springs to mind happened in India, where a BJP candidate, that's the ruling party, used a similar technology to essentially speak different regional dialects that he couldn't actually speak. And in this example, it wasn't disclosed clearly to the audience that this was AI generated. And when it emerged that it was, the actual BJP party disowned this use and kind of uh, decried it as something that they didn't want. And then more recently in Indonesian elections that happened earlier this year, we saw um, an avatar of a synthetically resurrected, deceased um, previous leader coming back to endorse one of the candidates. President Indonesia. But in the Argentinian elections late last year, we saw both candidates using AI-generated images to depict the opponents as either weak, but also to embolden themselves, making them look like heroes or strong men. My concern, I guess, is that if we do start to see politicians really embracing this and this is becoming a much more high-volume form of political communication, it will lead to increasing distrust in media of politicians more broadly there's an estimated 2 billion people voting in elections across the globe this year. The stakes have never been higher when it comes to determining political fact from fake.